Good day. In this video clip presentation, uh, I'm going to be discussing the data type questions that are found in the paper two. The first question, your IB paper two paper, uh, is a data type question. And it can come from any area really in physics and you'll be given generally data graphs to analyze and so forth. Uh, in this case, this comes from the unit one worksheet uh, that the IB ones get and uh, I'm going to discuss in a bit of detail and bring out some of the important points. This one over here has to do with Newton's second law. Remember, you may not, we haven't actually got there yet if we just in IB1, starting IB1 now, force is equal to mass times acceleration. Um, that is Newton's second law and this is an experiment to investigate that. We have a weight here it's providing a force in this di direction or a tension in the rope and it's going to cause this trolley uh, to accelerate and we're going to investigate that. So let's go through the question and hopefully we'll be able to get things to seem a little bit clearer. So going down to the first question here, uh, this is very important. I'm going to discuss in a bit more detail than what the question actually demands. It's just describe the graph that you would expect if two quantities are proportional to each other. A proportional graph is of the form y is equal to mx. It's your straight line graph. If you were doing this in math, it would look something like this, and it would be there. It actually goes through the origin, through the center point, um, it's a straight line, so the slope, the gradient, the m is constant. So the rise over the run will give you your slope, and it will always go through the origin. That is a proportion graph. You may have situations where you will have this situation. This is of the form y is equal to mx plus b, where b is the y-intercept. That is not a proportion graph, but often we, we have situations where you have um, straight line graphs and it could be because of some systematic error that it is not going through the, z through the zero axis um, as we are going to see in this case, in this problem that we are going to be dealing with. So here, describe the graph that you would expect if two quantities are proportional to one another it would be a straight line and it will go through the origin. Those would be the two points that you would need to state for that. Now, we have our graph here. Um, it says David's data are shown below with uncertainty limits included for the values of the weights. Draw the best fit line for, this, for these graphs. I'm going to reduce my size here so that I can bring it more into one page and um, let's make it say 130. There we are. We can... All right, so here we have it. Uh, David's data are shown below with the uncertainty limits included for the values. Uh, use the graph to explain what is meant by systematic error. Um, now, first see they ask us to draw a best fit line graph and now basically that line that you choose should be drawn with a ruler please make sure you use a ruler I'm not going to use a ruler now so you'll see my graph won't look so great but you must always use a ruler and you must make sure or you must try make sure that it go they go uh, through the error bars that's important if possible obviously sometimes we're going to have it so I'm going to make a stab at it, see if I can get it, uh, and it would be something like that. There's the, the line, should be a straight line, and you can see it's going through all the error bars, so that would get you your two marks for that. Now explain what is meant by a systematic error. Now a systematic error is caused by some problem in the experimental setup that causes a consistent or a regular error to uh, affect each data point. Now, 
we would expect if this is f is equal to m a, um, and here we've got our, you see here we've got our weight or our force there and our acceleration here. So we've actually got this formula a is equal to f over m or 1 over m f. So we've got that situation there. We would expect if, that this graph should do this. That would be a proportion graph. But as you can see, each point is off a certain amount by the same amount. That's the indication of a systematic error uh, by the same amount. So uh, a systematic error um, is, is one in which every point deviates from the correct value. So there's a there's a there's a, a regular deviation from that correct value. Now, estimate the value of the frictional force. We would have it that it is this value over here. Let me just remove all this writing that I've got here. I will have to redraw my graph. Oh, didn't make such a good time with that one. Um, but anyway. Here it is going through here, so this force, which was like 0 0.3 newtons, when it was applied, you're still getting no acceleration. Now that was purely to overcome, that 0 0.3 is to overcome friction. Overcome the friction, so, and that would be the, the systematic error. It would knock out each value. Um, the weight, the force acting on it would be knocked out each time by that 0 0.3 newton. So that would be your estimate, um, your value for that. Now, the, the question goes on to ask the following. I'm going to keep my graph there. It says, estimate the mass of the trolley. Now, again, I've got to redraw this thing. I'm getting quite good at redrawing it. Well, maybe not so. Now, as I said, we've got this situation that A is equal to 1 over mf. Now, if I compare that to Y is equal to mx, we can see that your slope, this is the slope, sorry, slope or the gradient, depending on which um, term you like to use. The slope or the gradient of this graph is actually going to equal 1 over m. So I need to work out the slope of this graph. Now, what's important with this is that you use as long a line as possible. I would always try to use the whole line if I can. So in this case, I'm going to work out my slope like that using this whole triangle here. Now, from this, I can see that I'm going from 0 0.3. That's the point there is 0 0.3. And I'm going to... 2.1, uh, 2.15, so my horizontal uh, change can be worked out from that, and here it's easy, I know that my vertical is 1.4, so my slope, um, let me write it as slope, is going to equal 1.4 divided by, and this would be um, 2.85, no, sorry, 1.85, 1.85, um, you get your value for that, we'll call that x, 1 over m, 1 over the mass is equal to that x, so the mass is equal to 1 over x, the inverse of that, and you should be getting a value when you do that um, of about, um, for the for the mass um, of about 1.4 kilograms. It works out to be um, about 1.4 kilograms, the mass is equal to 1.4 kilograms. Um, and uh, you can get a range there to see the range that you would be correct is from 1.2 to 1.6 kilograms. Now often in these problems, you'll be working with the slope to give you a value, or your, in some cases, with your, with your y-intercepts, um, with your y-intercept, sometimes with the x-intercept. Uh, any further questions in this? That seems to 
just about be it. So I hope you found that, that useful. Thank you very much.